and welcome to another review of the Baldwin S12. On first impressions, it's absolutely outstanding. With its crisp line work and LED headlights, and even cab detail, this loco is worth the $115. For those who don't know, Baldwin prioritized steam locomotive construction, but during various dieselization schemes and plans, Baldwin decided to go ahead and try some diesel locomotives. One of the most successful was Liss, with the most of them being purchased by Shortlines and Southern Pacific. It's a Baldwin S12. Now, for a switcher, they're actually rather big, especially seeing how they weren't even considered road switcher. But for what they were made to do, they did it well. Now, let's get on to the model. We'll start with the bad news, which isn't actually quite a lot. First off, this was from Bowser's Trains, if that's how you say it. And I'm not sure if this is a regular for them, but all these little handrail details I had to apply. And with my big chubby hands, that wasn't very easy. Nor were there horns for either a stack, nor a horn, leaving these nasty, super loose splotches left over. I'm not sure if it's just mine, it's probably just mine, but the rear headlight doesn't seem to work in reverse. I'll show you this later during running. And so far, that's all the cons I really have with this locomotive. The pros. Even though I had to apply a majority of the separately fitted details, they do look nice once applied. However, another bad thing is that some of the parts do snap easily, like this coupler bit here, whatever they're called. It's hard to see it's hard to see on my phone, but both sides snapped. This is a small detail compared to the rest of the locomotive. But it is annoying, and if you don't have a good pair of tweezers, this thing is a beast to take care of. But anyway, let's get back to the pros, because that's what we were talking about. The line work is extremely crisp and pretty, and even though there's not much, this is only one of the few engines I have with actual cab detail. Something that is nice about having to apply your own details is smaller details that would be neglected, like Labelle, are implemented. However, I'm not sure if the Tiger Stripe 7 Pacific had these, but most Baldwin S12s that I've seen have had the Baldwin Builders Plates, where the F is on this unit. Speaking of the F, even though my phone is rather bad at picking this up, you can read a lot of this stuff if you have good eyes. Like, this is extremely blurry for you, and that's just my fault, <laughs> due to a camera. But I can see that tiny, tiny text that's just a blur for you says 1000. And that's not even with my glasses on. I normally need glasses to read that. You can, however, see the F, which is pretty cool for me. I have attempted on previous models of mine to do the F, and it just comes out as a smudge. Then again, I'm not that good of a painter either. So, this is one side of the locomotive. Why not just flip to the other side? Because there's more detail on there as well. Again, I'm not sure if this is just my model, but mine appears to be... broken? Question mark? With this uh, toolbox kind of thing. Appears the roof is coming off. Here we have the step ladder upwards. Again, hard to see. Bad camera. Sorry. <laughs> there you go. And before I continue, this is just a beautiful shot. Anyway, now that I've ruined it, <laughs> you can see here. If there wasn't cat hair in the way, you can see here, there's a small itty bitty handrail. Just adds a bit of detail, really. And even though there's all these pros about this engine, my favorite thing 
of this entire model can be summed up with one thing. We have the right style of KD couplers that I use. Woo! Anyway, so let's give this thing a run. As you can see, while running backwards, the back bulb doesn't seem to work. <laughs> Alright, so I'm at zero, and we're going to see how much of a crawl this thing can do. It is a bit jerky, but that is moving. Well, to start to move, I needed to put it at 10. Which I guess is pretty good. Now, for any good freight locomotive, it needs to pull at at least a free car freight train. In my opinion, that is. So, we're gonna make a small freight consist with a boxcar, a hopper, and a flatbed. With the journal boxes cleaned and oiled, we can get a little locomotive on this concept. A locomotive is attached to the train. Sorry about the dog, uh, but you're just gonna have to deal with it. Now let's see if, <clears throat> if you can do a full loop around my layout, which is a complete mess right now. Uh... So, we forgot the boxcar. So, the Reading boxcar has been replaced with a Sioux Line boxcar. We can get going. Wrong way. So there you have it ladies and gentlemen, the Baldwin S12. Now, in my personal opinion, this locomotive is beautiful and it runs nice and smooth even around my janky old track. 
So if you're ever worried about spending too much money on a locomotive for your HO layout, don't be scared. Because in my experience, locomotives that you, sp that you spend over $100 on always appear to be the best models. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to subscribe and watch more of my model train view videos, then please say so in the comments. If not, and you want something else, say so in the comments. I don't know what it is about the tiger scheme, but I just love it so much.